The standard indications for transanal endoscopic surgery include excision of benign and malignant lesions from benign adenomas that are not endoscopically resectable to early rectal cancers. TES can be curative in T1 and 0 rectal cancers. Lymph node involvement can be assessed by preoperative transrectal ultrasound and pelvic MRI, and if positive, precludes treatment with transanal endoscopic surgery. Prior to surgery, at the patient's clinic visit, it is extremely important to evaluate the patient with digital rectal exam and rigid proctoscopy in order to clearly document the exact location, height, size, and circumferential involvement of the lesion. This step is crucial for successful positioning. The lesion must always be positioned at 6 o'clock due to the narrow working space in the rectum. Lesions of the lateral or anterior aspect of the rectum require lateral decubitus or prone positioning respectively. This patient's lesion is posterior, therefore the patient is in lithotomy position. There are several rigid and flexible platforms for transanal endoscopic surgery. In this video, we will demonstrate the rigid platform. TES is performed through a proctoscope 4 cm in diameter. Before inserted, anorectal massage with two finger breadths is performed. A fixed arm is typically used, however for ease of maneuvering the camera we use a pneumatic arm. The lesion is approximately 6 cm from the anal verge on the first rectal valve. The size of the lesion is approximately 5 cm by 3 cm, and it has a wide base not suitable for polypectomy. The circumference of the lesion is scored using a monopolar energy source, keeping approximately 1 cm margins. Note the use of angled graspers and angled needle tip electrosurgery device due to the narrow working space in the rectum. TES has a steep learning curve, mostly because of the technical challenge of working in a narrow space. One tip that helps to overcome this challenge is for the surgeon to tuck his or her arms close to the body to avoid crossing instruments. The first step is to score a circumferential resection margin one centimeter from the tumor. The use of electrosurgery is then employed with either monopolar or ultrasonic energy devices. In this case, ultrasonic energy is used as it is efficient and provides adequate hemostasis. The insufflator and smoke evacuation device used in this rigid platform use the same channel. As smoke evacuation takes place, insufflation is stopped. This does not produce a perceptible loss of pneumorectum. In cases where we intend curative resection for possible early cancer, we choose a full thickness approach. For very select large lesions that are likely benign, we perform a submucosal resection. The mesorectal fat is seen in this view as the dissection progresses through the full thickness of the rectum. The dissection continues along the previously scored mucosa until the excised piece of rectum can be lifted and divided from the mesorectal fat below it. Care is taken to preserve the orientation of the specimen as it is removed from the rectum. It is then carefully pinned in position and sent fresh to pathology. The resulting defect is large, and although extraperitoneal defects do not always require closure, larger defects should be closed, as well as more superior defects that may extend intraperitoneally. The defect is sutured transversely so as to avoid causing a stricture in the rectal lumen. The first bite is taken in the middle of the defect in order to bisect the wound and reduce the amount of tension. The figure 8 configuration of the wound is seen nicely here. The type of suture used in this closure is a self-locking, barbed, absorbable suture. The defect is closed in a running fashion. Full thickness bites are taken. Our practice is to close every defect, although some argue that it is not necessary to close distal extraperitoneal defects. The benefits of closing the defect are primarily to obtain hemostasis and to prevent pelvic pain. Despite using self-locking sutures, as this is a high tension wound, we chose to reinforce the closure with a bead. The resulting wound is nicely reapproximated with good hemostasis. Patency of the rectal lumen is then confirmed at the end of the case. We view TES as an excisional biopsy. If there is an invasive carcinoma with poor prognostic features as shown, we recommend further radical curative surgery. Thank you.